Sikh traditional apicia represents a distinctive entity quite often misunderstood and mismanaged. Sikh pattern traditional apicia arises insidiously due to chronic mechanical stress due to tight tying of a top knot or the judah. And this happens particularly in Sikh men. Over time, this persistent traction leads to hairline recession, leads to effacement of the temple points on both sides of the forehead. This pattern is not only anatomically unique, but it is culturally nuanced as well. And its restoration demands a thoughtful, individualized approach. And in today's case, the case that I wish to highlight this morning, this patient presented after having undergone a hair restoration for a Sikh pattern traction alopecia at another clinic in Ludhiana. Unfortunately, whereas frontal hairline grafts were placed, the patient was discouraged from doing temple point restoration. And the outcome after six months was a glaring aesthetic mismatch, a frontal wall without wings. From the front, the restoration appeared satisfactory, but from an oblique or lateral view from the sides, from the profile view, the incompleteness of it all was jarring to the eyes and to the patient's confidence as well. A classic case of missing the forest for the trees. But why were the temple points left out? The answer, my dear friends, lies in their notorious complexity. The complexity of restoring temple points in Sikh pattern traction alopecia because they are extensive. Crafting natural temples in Sikh pattern traction alopecia is no walk in the park. It is a confluence of science, of art and a deep anatomical respect. The hair of the temple grow at a sharp angle. The emerging angle is very acute from the skin. It almost hugs the skin and a distinct posterior and inferior sweep, what we call as fish tailing. And replicating this demands not just technical dexterity, but an eye trained in aesthetics and geometry. Even a slight deviation and angulation, like you can see in this picture, can result in unnatural tufts that betray the surgeon's hand. And which surgeon would wish to do that? Moreover, beneath this temple point runs the frontal branch of the facial nerve, a very important nerve in facial expression. And this nerve is responsible for forehead elevation and vital facial expressions, which if missing, look like the face is paralyzed. Any inadvertent injury in this area to the facial nerve is a price too dear for the surgeon's deputation and more so for the patient's dignity. But this is precisely why it must be done. In sick pattern traction alopecia, the temple points are not an optional extra. They are ground zero, often the first to recede and the most visibly altered. Not doing temple points during surgical hair restoration for sick pattern traction alopecia leads to lack of facial framing and patients are acutely conscious of this. Patients would not articulate this technically. They would not even realize what they're not getting done. But as hair grows out in six to nine months, they miss something. They miss their temple points. And this is intuitive because it is the temple points which change appearance the most when you're suffering from sick pattern traction alopecia. Without doing the temple points in sick pattern traction alopecia, the task is only half done. Like painting a masterpiece but forgetting the corners of the canvas. So friends, there is no room for shortcuts in a field that intersects identity and biology so intimately. When executed correctly, temple point restoration does not just restore hair, it restores self-confidence, self-image and identity. So let us not aim for an easy win in surgical hair restoration for sick pattern traction alopecia. Let's complete the work at hand. Not only does the devil reside in details, but also there exists divinity in detail. In the quiet intricacies of temple point work lies the difference between mediocrity and mastery, between a procedure and a transformation. Well, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.